Well, hey there, guys. I'm Axel the Beast of ZeldaDungeon.net, and you know, I know, I know, I I knock Twilight Princess a lot, or maybe not knock, but I I talk a lot about things I think are wrong with it. You know, I I don't make up a lot of it to be a great game. You know, but that's not. I mean, just before I get into this video, I want to say that's I do feel it's an incredible game, and that's why it I bit I uh, complain about it so much because I I you know I want it to be even better. But that's kind of the uh, curse of creating good games. So I'm just one of those annoying guys who just comes in and whines about something he actually loves. Last video I talked all, like about Ganondorf and what he had to do with the series, and I got thinking out, like right after the video. In fact, like maybe a half hour after I recorded, I thought about all this and I had it ready um, for this video. And I wanted to talk about you know in Twilight Princess how uh, Ganondorf uh, appear appears at the end. I know, I've complained about how I, I feel he like came out of nowhere and it kind of ruined him in the game and ruined the game potentially. Though I don't think it ruined it, just you know, lessened it. And um, I've been thinking, you know, of course I've talked about how you know I think they could have di they should have completely ditched Ganondorf, and how I think they could have they should have uh, played up Zant more, made him a bigger character, gave him more character development, made him more epic. And uh, skipped Hyrule Castle and had uh, Zant and the Palace of Twilight be the end of the game. And they could have made him a lot more epic and not as lame as some people think he is. Um, that said, this video is not about what I think they should have changed. You know, not in that big a sense, at least. I want to talk about, you know, what I think they could have kept the same. How they could have still kept the same concepts with the story and how it ended. And still had, um... Gan and s still made it a great story. How they could have improved what they had. So in another way, in a way, I'm going to be talking less about what I think they did wrong with the game and whining and whining and whining, like you guys are sick of me doing. And I'm going to talk more about, um, you know, some things that they just. I'm going to, you know, come up with some positive solutions for what they could have done. And I think if they actually did this, this uh, Twilight Princess may have ended up as one of the best Zelda stories of all time and it has been so cinematic and amazing. So, hopefully I've caught your interest with that. Um, first off, I think they should have downplayed Zant a bit. I mean, I know that's a completely opposite, but again, we're keeping trying to keep with what they had. Um, that or they could have simply, um, they could have kept him roughly the same. I mean, he needed the character development. But I think they should have, um, really made it clear that there was something behind or above Gan um, Zant. I think they should have made it clear that he was an underling of something or something was bigger and badder than he was. I mean, you know, they made him up to be this really big guy and then he got ditched. So I think they need to have made it so, um, a little more clear that he was, he was beneath something. And, um, you know, like foreshadow an ominous Thing behind him, it could have been. A, they could have implied that it was a new villain, or even made it even more vague, so that you thought it was just some kind of entity or force. You know, something like for, out of H.P. Lovecraft's work, the Cthulhu Mythos. They could have made it very scary, thinking that this power he got from his god. It, it made it less clear that there was an actual guy or man behind him, or even a creature, and just implied maybe he has this weird, twisted power. Stories like that can be very interesting, and um. Now, I think they also should have not mentioned Ganondorf at all in the game. And I know that, again, seems opposite of what I've said before because I thought that they should, you know, have made Ganon more prominent. But to make keep it how it was, where he popped up at the end, I think they kind of ruined the impact it had, the surprise, when they talked about him all the time. I think they should have made it so that that Arbiter, that scene that happens at Arbiter's Grounds where you actually see him should never have happened. I don't think they should have showed that. And, well, they could have done it later, but not then. I don't think they should have ever said Ganondorf's name, because on the timeline, the child timeline, which the game takes place, Ganondorf was defeated by the sages when, you know, he killed that one. It was like, whoa. And then at that point, you were like, dude, Zan's not the villain. Ganondorf's in this game. You know, I mean, come on, all of you had that reaction. So I think they should have not mentioned Ganon, because no one in the world would have really known about him except those who help defeat him, you know, the sages, who, one of them died, you know. Um, and I think, you know, like when he defeated Zant, he shouldn't have said, Ganon's my boss. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, that, that guy, yeah, yeah. 
I don't think Xanth should have done that. I think that they should have done is, you know, you defeat Xant and you're like, okay, something's up. Something's still up. That barrier in Hyrule Castle, it's still up. What's going on? So you go to investigate. And then I think Hyrule Castle should have been longer to prolong this suspense. It should have been more suspenseful and had a beam been bigger and had more to it. Kind of like Ganon's Tower of uh, A Link to the Past, the final era with tons of traps, maybe fighting some familiar boss foes or something. And, you know, they just keep going and build up what... Um, you know, you're, you're suspenseful because you don't know what you're going to fight. What, what is this thing? And no one's going to suspect it was Ganon, or at least not most people, because in every game that has Ganon, he's brought up by the midway point. Like in A Link to the Past, when you went to the Dark World, they said, oh, Ganon's the boss. And, and like, that's exactly what happened in Twilight Princess. Halfway through, oh, there's Ganon. They didn't say he was the boss, but who wasn't thinking it? So, uh... And at the end, I think they should have perhaps expanded some of the moments with Ganon, you know, like made that a little longer. Um, or at least more story stuff, he talked more. You could have moved in those like scenes like what happened at Arbiter's Grounds, you could have moved that to here. And then, uh, and like the scenes where Zant was explaining what happened between him and Ganon. And then, BOOM! Big Ganon appearance, it's totally shocking, it's like, whoa in your face when he pops up on the throne, and he's like, or whatever he did, I don't think I can do it. But, you know, um, it just would have had so much tre tremendous impact. And I think that would have really made it amazing. I think that would make Twilight Princess my favorite storyline out of all the Zelda games, that they had done that big bang ending and had, like, you know, made it build up to it, really made you scared of what you were up against. So... I think if they did that, Twilight Princess would have blown us away. And I'm almost a little more disappointed now that I thought of this, because I think it shows how much extreme potential the already great Twilight Princess had to be even more amazing, an even greater game than it was. It could have blown- it could have beaten Ocarina of Time, I think, if they had done that. Uh, that's all I gotta say. Uh, do you guys- what do you guys think of this concept? Do you think this would've been cool? Do you like it how it was? Do you have a different idea what they should've done again? You know, tell me in the comments, and I'll see you next time, guys.